Good evening. Welcome to TV Party Tonight. I'm your host, the mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. And tonight, our favorite show is Muppets Now, the Disney Plus TV show, six episodes, premiered on July 31st, 2020. Here to discuss Muppets Now with me is Alexis Hanna from Honeysuckle Rose Creations. How do you do, madam? I'm doing good. Everything is better with the Muppets. Let's talk Muppets for a moment. Let's, let's Before we get into Muppets now, which is the latest iteration to try to freshen up this brand and make it so that people in 2020 will actually uh, spend money on it. Um, you're seven years younger than me, roughly. Uh, did you get a, did, Have you ever actually watched the original Muppet show that was on, uh, what was it, the late 70s, early 80s? My parents had VHSs. The, 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 they released a handful of videotapes that were kind of like a uh, uh, best clips, uh, uh, clip show style, I would say, of the Muppets. And I watched them all the time, and I loved them. Uh, I did also grow up with the Muppet Babies, which I'm normally not a fan of the whole, let's just take the cartoon characters or, or the characters and make them younger cliche. Muppet Babies was actually really, really good. Not to mention, it was the it was my introduction to a lot of pop culture. Not ashamed to admit it, Muppet Babies is how I learned about Star Wars. <laughs> Your introduction to Star Wars was via the Muppet Babies episode? Yes, that, well, th- I, that's how young I was. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I grew up watching The Muppet Show. Um, I, I, had a, I actually had a lunchbox for The Muppet Show. I also grew up <laughs> watching the movies. Uh, I, I, the yes. very first one I had, and probably to this day my favorite Muppet movie, is The Great Muppet Caper. I, 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 as people know who listen to these podcasts, there's a lot of my sense of humor that I have derived from movies that I saw as a kid. And so much of my humor is also taken from The Great Muppet Caper. Not to mention, I can sing the Happiness Hotel song word for word still at 44 years old. I can't remember what I did on Sunday, but I can remember (laughs) there's no fire in the fireplace. There's no carpet on the floor. Don't try to order dinner. There's no kitchen anymore. Um, I... I was my favorite was the Muppets Take Manhattan. That well, was I, my favorite. I wanted to ask you about that. You know, one, did you watch the movies growing up, and about where did you bow out? Because I bowed out pretty much after the Muppets Take Manhattan. But the Muppets Take Manhattan is where they is where they first did the Muppet Babies. There's a dream sequence that Miss Piggy goes through, mm-hmm. and she starts talking about you know what if we had met when we were younger, and they do the Mama Dada Upup Chihuahua song. And, <laughs> yes. and it is from Mama Dada Up Up Chihuahua that we got Muppet Babies, the cartoon, which I also watched as a kid. I remember, actually, not too long ago when Muppets Most Wanted was out. I, I got it on. I rented it. And I'm watching it. And Andre comes down and he's just like, why are there so many celebrities? I'm like, you don't get it, hun. It is considered the greatest honor in the world to be a celebrity doing a random as hell cameo in anything associated with the Muppets. I think it's either the Great Muppet Caper or um, yeah, I think it's the Great Muppet Caper where the line is, what are you doing here? And like Oscar the Grouch is in the scene. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? A very brief cameo. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> that line still gets me to this day. So clearly you and I both have a lot of affection for the Muppets. Um, not everything they've done has been a hit. Uh, certainly some of the movies were a bit of a miss. I've, I've heard A Muppet's Christmas Carol is like one of the best iterations of the Charles Dickens classic. I have actually never seen it. Have you? Oh, yes! Michael Caine is Ebenezer Scrooge! It's uh, great! I love it because you get 
Gonzo is the narrator, and he's there with Riz. He goes, I'm here to tell the story. And Riz goes, and I am here for the food. <laughs> the, the Muppets without heavily laden sarcasm just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. And, of course, we have seen the Muppets try to make comebacks throughout the years. I remember a while, ages ago they tried to do... Essentially, it was a, re, a new version of the classic show with the Muppets Theater. There, I, I only remember seeing two episodes. Billy Crystal was a guest on one. This is, the, remember... is this the iteration where Waldorf and Statler, who my friend John Brodigan and I affectionately refer to ourselves and we're together as Waldorf and Statler... Uh, for I, a variety no, of reasons. Like, do I want to know which one you are? It, it I'm one of them. Um, it, it, the point is, we are, we are ha- always commenting and cracking wise and making fun of uh, everything and everyone around us when we are together. We're not, a, we're not a good combination. <laughs> Here it is, Muppets Tonight ran from '96 to '98. Okay, well, what I was asking, is this the iteration where Waldorf and Statler are in the old folks' home? I think it might have been, uh, yeah, usually seen heckling the show from an unnamed retirement home. Yeah. Season, and traveling to different areas, watching the show, because, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not Muppets without War- Waldorf, and St- I can never pronounce his name right, and Statler just being absolutely terrible. My friend, a uh, different friend than I, used to have a music blog you know, back when those were a thing. And um, our our profile picture was actually Waldorf and Statler. <laughs> um, yeah, so, not a, not every version of the Muppets was a big... I'm actually surprised that ran as long as it did, because I heard it was not good. Uh, and some of the again, movies was, also were a big miss. I've heard Muppet Treasure Island was not great. Oh, um, uh, see, I... Tim Curry is long John Silver. I'm sorry, I, I can't fight it. Not to mention the song Shiver My Timbers I is actually a really, really good song. I love it. Um, I've heard mixed things about the Muppets Wizard of Oz. Never actually seen that one. I watched a lot of uh, Muppets in Space because that got aired on TV like crazy when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was kind of funny to find out that Gonzo was an alien. <laughs> well, the original, and, and I bring this up because it relates to Muppets now, um, the original iteration of the Muppet show was it was a parody of the skit comedy, the sketch comedy show. Um, that's that's really what it was. it was. It was Muppets doing sketches, but it was also, I think, taking the sketch comedy show format to task and kind of making fun of it. Mm-hmm. Um and you got to see the sketches, but you know a lot of the show also took place in the background with Scooter and Kermit trying to organize things and you know um, round up all the cats and literally sometimes and get them onto the stage. Herding cats—that's the phrase I was looking for. Yeah. And they kept they kept trying over the years to come back to this uh, one. We one we hadn't talked about, which was again a different way of framing the concept of the Muppets and updating it, which was, uh, I believe it was called The Muppets. It was on for one season, and this was, the the take on this show was a lot of the same stuff. It was the sort of office backstage presentation, but the show they were putting on was Miss Piggy's talk show. And did you watch this? Not 100% certain, like I said, I'm going through some of the previous versions. This was on a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do remember, uh, what was it, the It's a Very Muppet, uh, Very Merry Muppet Christmas movie, which mm-hmm. was a parody of uh, It's a Wonderful Life, which featured my absolute favorite moment when Kermit sees Rizzo the Rat on Fear Factor, and they're trying to eat him, and he just screamed, <laughs> how can NBC live with themselves? If you've never seen The Muppets, uh, give it a watch. It is a strange show, and it, you know, my wife and I watched it. I think from beginning to end, and it definitely finds a while to, to it takes a while to find its footing. Um, Miss Piggy is like bipolar, <laughs> and her and Kermit have this on again, well, off they, again they, romance well, where broke. she's kind of abusive to him. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much did break up, and then they did the weird thing of having Kermit get a new girlfriend who's also a pig. Yeah, Which, okay, so you did see it then. 
I saw like one or two episodes. I think I mostly just remember it for, um, oh God, what's the name of that amazingly awesome male singer? I'm trying to remember his name. Josh something. James Hetfield? No, hang on a second. I'm going to. Dave Mustaine? No. <laughs> Ozzy uh, Osbourne? Josh Groban. That's okay. it. Yeah, I remember one episode where they had Josh Groban come on, and he apparently starts uh, a relationship with Miss Piggy. And I, I, I mostly just remember, I was like, wow, you, you, you hear Josh Groban singing, and you never imagined he'd be up for something like that. <laughs> it's um, like, wow, Josh Groban goes from playing the piano and singing to making out with a fake pig. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's got a better sense of humor than I thought. Publicly, it was not, the show was not received well. People did not like this update of the Muppets and I can see why I it it got the show got better as time went on and they but they really like upped the adultness of the Muppets and the Muppets was one of those things that was very family friendly I mean there were it was one of those that rode that line where there was sarcasm there for the adults that they could laugh at but there was fun stuff there for the kids and the Muppets was not a kid show at all. It was basically a prime time relationship sitcom with puppets. And see, it, that was hard see, for people to accept. See, I just never watched it because uh, I am signing my own death warrant here. I was never a fan of The Office. Okay. I'm not crazy about that workplace hidden camera style of humor. I just, I just think it gets annoying after a while. And I really didn't care to see the Muppets doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was there going, like, well, you were not I love the only the one. Yeah, I was there going, I love the Muppets. I want to watch the Muppets. Muppets make everything better. I, you know, I'm the person that when I saw the 2011 Muppets movie, um, when they start singing Rainbow Connection, I was bawling. I was crying so hard when they start singing that song. Um, yeah, I like the, the, the Muppet, the new Muppet movie. What did you think of Muppets Most Wanted? I enjoyed it, actually. <laughs> I think my favorite reaction was, again, this is one that uh, I rented. I'm watching it, I'm sitting on the couch. And when they cut to the prison scene and you see Danny Trejo there, I just threw up my hands. I'm like, of course, he probably came with the set. <laughs> um, so that brings us to Muppets Now. Muppets Now is another attempt to freshen up the original concept of the Muppets where they're putting on a show... But you're seeing the background. And these are very, very short episodes. I think they run about 15 minutes long. Yeah, like and, 20 to 20, 22 minutes, really, something like that. Um, and there's only six episodes. And th the way that they freshened this up was they made it basically like an internet show. Uh, so they have Scooter, and they use him as the framing device where he's uploading the shows to a server for a streaming service. And it's different. Uh, it, it's different bits that they're doing. So we have lifestyle with Miss Piggy, and we'll talk about these individually. Uh, Orky Dorky Cookin', Muppet Masters, uh, where Walter discovers the Muppets' hidden talent, and they only do that twice. Uh, Mupp Close and Personal, which is they they do it three times. And this is a celebrity. This is an inside the actor's studio kind of a thing. And basically, it's an interview with a celebrity. Muppet Labs I Field. I have to say on that one, whoever put Miss Piggy and RuPaul together, why has that never happened before? <laughs> Muppet Labs Field Test. And then Peppy's Unbelievable Game Show. Um, some of these they do every episode. Some of them they only do here and there. Uh, so let's talk about these one by one. Tell me what you think of them. So, the lifestyle with Miss Piggy. They did this in all the episodes. Uh, Ty Diggs is in this, and he does the d different segments with Miss Piggy where they're trying spa treatments or exotic foods. And then she does uh, these Zoom chats with Linda Cardellini and two other Muppets. <sighs> let, me, let me give you my impressions of this and, and sort of my opinion on Miss Piggy. And then you can uh, jump in here. First of all, I've always found Miss Piggy to be an aggravating character. Um, you know, she's one of the main Muppets, and you know, and I'm sure that there's some affection for her just for all the you know the years that they've used her, you know, in various uh, you know, Muppet shows and movies and whatnot. 
But she she never really appealed to me. She's not one of my favorite Muppets. And I actually thought this she was kind of funny in the... She wasn't nearly... First of all, she works opposite Uncle, du- uh, Uncle Deadly, and he's hilarious. Like, they found a character to attach to her to make her... To, to bring her down a notch and make her tolerable. And I... I there was a couple of gags throughout the six episodes in, in her segments that I thought were really funny. Like, there's the bit where she's trying the exotic foods, and she keeps yeah. giving it to the dog. And at the end of it, she's like, <laughs> doesn't anyone have a hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> I love Uncle Deadly. Apparently, I did a little looking into it because <laughs> I was trying to figure out, like, you know, what what exactly they were going for with this. Apparently, he was originally a background uh, Muppet monster for it was either Alice Cooper or Vincent Price's show back in the day. And when they needed an evil sidekick for uh, Chris Cooper in the 2011 Muppet movie, they literally just pulled him out of storage and like, here, this will work. And mm-hmm. he has gotten such a fan base over it, and I love he is so much fun. It's just, I just love how, he, again, it's like he is obviously designed to be so evil and so scary looking. He's got that refined voice. It's just, oh my god, it's hilarious. Yeah, he, I think he works better opposite Miss Piggy because he gives her a little bit of shit back as opposed <laughs> to Kermit, who was always very mealy-mouthed with. And he always allowed himself to get bullied by Miss Piggy. You know, and, and that's just kind of Kermit's character is he's he's always the one trying to pull things together, but he typically is a little spineless, and it was always frustrating, you know, because Piggy su- P- Miss Piggy, in almost anything she does, sucks up all the air in the room. And then you introduce the Uncle Deadly character, yeah. and he's so funny, and he takes Piggy down a peg, and he's not afraid to give, you know, to subtly give her shit back. So yes. they, 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 there's a really good comic pairing there. Absolutely. Miss Piggy is kind of a love it or leave it character. I know some people who swear by her and think she's hilarious. I know a lot of people who really can't stand her because, yes, she is pushy. She is bossy. But that's always been the, the way her character works. And it comes down to whether or not that's the kind of character you can really latch on to. And I know many cannot. So... I get why some people don't really like her that much. What did you think of Tay Diggs in these uh, six different episodes? How is that man still so gorgeous looking? I don't know. Seriously, it's like... That man has not aged a bit, and he is still just so freaking amazing looking. There are some actors who, even though they... And we'll get we'll talk about this with Hokey Dokey Cooking. Uh, there are some celebrities that come on various Muppet shows and some of them really go with it and are super comfortable and they're hilarious. Danny Trejo comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And then there are others that I think struggle with it. You know, they're either, they're they're just not used to being on camera that way. They're not used to working with puppets. They, They just, it's, they have a hard time, you know, like they took the gig, but they seem to have a hard time, uh, having fun with the concept and they look very awkward. And I'll tell you, Ty Diggs seemed like he was having a blast. Yes, absolutely. Supposedly, a lot of this mo- the show was unscripted. That's one of the things they really pushed for. Now, obviously, you can't be totally improv with uh, puppets. You can't do that. But you get the idea that they essentially sat down with um, uh, the puppet masters and the celebrities and what we're going to be. And they're like, okay, here's the idea. This is what we're going to go for. Feel free to improvise, you know. Just told them to have some fun with it. And you're absolutely right. Linda Cardellini and Tay Diggs both really did. Uh, it, clear, it was clear they had a lot of fun doing it. Whatever Linda Cardellini got for this is the easiest money she's ever made. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. She shows up for a few minutes in a Zoom and I think once or twice she actually interacts with a puppet. Um, you know, they, they show up in her Zoom or whatever. But, mm-hmm. you know, she just has to be there for these, like, very brief chats with Miss Piggy. And she's and it's like, yeah, cool, whatever. Like, you could, you could tell, though, it seems like those were, they were throwing curveballs at her. And that was very improv. And, and I think she was just like, I don't, there was a couple of them where I looked at it. And I'm like, 
Linda Carlini just feels like, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say here. So I'll just say something bland. I Which amused the shit out of me. Like, it, it was like every time they went to her, it just looked like she was uncomfortable, <laughs> which I thought was funny. I think the only actor who I really felt clearly didn't know what to do, and I hate to say it, was Aubrey Plaza. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why. Maybe because... I mean, I don't. I don't know if she can really improvise that much. I don't know much about her acting background. She was on Legion, and she was great. Uh, she was on. Um, uh, she was in some stupid movie where I thought she was funny. Uh, I know that well, she's, she's a very funny actress. I've seen her in enough stuff to know yeah. that. But, but she's, she's about, talented for sure. Yeah, but just something about the way they had her on the show. It's clear that she was not really ready to you know go with what they wanted so, like I said some people are very natural with improv and sort of interacting with puppets and being silly and letting their guard down and other actors struggle with it and are awkward um, anything else about the, the oh the other thing I gotta mention because I do love Muppet Sarcasm is the show was his lifestyle and then you know she's like no it's lifestyle lifestyle and every week they would like it, you know, almost like purposely fuck with her and mess with the name yeah <laughs> was I laughed at almost every gag with that. I thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. Anything else about lifestyle with Miss Piggy? I think we've covered all of it. Again, I really did enjoy it. Right, well, uh, I just gotta say, I think one of the things that really appealed to me from the show is I, I, my major was broad. I, my major in college was broadcasting. And the last few years, I worked as the uh, production director for the student-run TV network, and then later on, I, and then after that, I worked as uh, the producer for the student film TV show, which was called Etc. Mm-hmm. It was my job to go through student films that had been submitted and you know clear them for the air, and that got very grating after a while. But we had so many kids come through there saying they had ideas for TV shows that they wanted to put on the air. And there was one. We had one person who wanted to do a cooking show three episodes in and they quit. (laughs) They did not realize how much work went into doing a show like that. So watching stuff like this, it is giving me all kinds of flashbacks to working at the at the student run TV station, oh my god! Oh, I love a good cooking show. Uh, I like to watch Top Chef. I like to watch Master Chef. For a while, my daughter and I were watching uh, Kids Master Chef. I don't do much so much of the baking shows just because I don't. I I personally, in, in terms of eating, don't really have a sweet tooth, and you know I don't particularly enjoy much bakery. I think I like one thing, and that's like cookies. You know, I, I'm the guy that doesn't eat the birthday cake. That's that's how bad I am. So I tend to not watch baking shows. Um, though I will say I've watched it. I've watched a few of this stuff was really like uh, complex. Where they've had to build like just entire scenes out of food. Like, Absolutely. I, uh, that I'm more into just because of the art of it. Um, but yeah, I typically am not a, like a huge baking show person. But I love a good cooking show. Um, I love, you know, either food tours, you know, like Carnival Eats or something like that. Or, you know, like food review shows. People, you know, I there's been a show on the YouTube that I've been watching called Eater. Where it's these two butchers that go to different places around New York and, you know, and try uh, some pretty interesting food. So the idea of a Muppet cooking show with one of my favorite Muppets. We go from my least favorite to one of my most favorite. I think the Swedish chef. I think the Swedish chef is hysterical. I've done. I, I've done the burp, burp, burp bit. Like you know, just just that just weaved its way into my sense of humor. Um, I used to find the Swedish chef bits on the Muppet Show hilarious. Yes. Was, so the idea of them doing sort of a modern. <laughs> cook versus cook kind of uh, cooking show here with the Swedish chef and actual celebrity chefs. I like this. This is funny to me. Do you remember the one with the, uh, when he's trying to cook the lobster and then the lobster banditos come in? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So this was a really good example of some people are, some people that come on the Muppets are, you know, really uh, are willing to go with it. Like Danny Trejo, he was super into it. 
he was super comfortable and you know and him making the taco first of all this is one of the funnier gags i saw during the, during the six episodes uh, the five out of six episodes they do this where he's making a mole and <laughs> Fucking Swedish chef! It was all mole, and he's got a he's got a Muppet mole that he's trying to put in the taco. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! Um, the other one I really liked was when uh, th- there was one where they weren't competing against each other. He was helping, and yeah, I think they were making like a Korean dish. And he was like, "Here, you make the rice." <laughs> the Swedish chef is like, "Fuck this." Yeah, oh my god, Rob, yeah, that was Roy Choi, who Beverly Plume was hitting on like crazy. That was so funny. Um, I think it's the first or second, might have been both, uh, chefs. The, the They just seemed very awkward in front of the camera. Like, like you could tell like, they weren't given much direction. They were like, go ahead and interact with this Muppet and make your dish. And they didn't know what the Swedish chef was going to do. And they were like, oh my god. <laughs> The, African, the African-American woman mostly was just like, I don't know what I'm doing here. This was a terrible mistake. Yeah, tell me I am not the only one who every time they went to this, I was like, oh, please tell me it's Gordon Ramsay. Please tell me it's Gordon Ramsay. I think Gordon Ramsay would have had fun with it. Oh, he has. He's interacted with it. They did a special where he uh, co- did a little cook-off with Swedish Chef before. And it was great. I'm like, oh my god, I want him back on this show so badly. I, I'm a huge Gordon Ramsay fan. I'm, you've seen pictures of my cooking. You have requested I stuff a lot of my cooking into an envelope and mail it to you. Correct. So you know that I love good cooking shows. My dad practically raised me on Good Eats with Alton Brown. Okay. So yeah, I loved seeing Swedish Chef get his own series. What did you think of Beverly Plume, the turkey? She was a new character created for this. Um, I thought she was fine. I, she's funny at times. I think they used her well. She wasn't grating. Uh, she wasn't zany. You know, she was kind of there to do a, to do a job. She served a function, and I thought the function was served well. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else about Okie Dokie Cooking? Really hope the show gets second season and we get more chefs on it. There are so many crazy celebrity chefs who I know would be, interact so well oh, with R- Richard chef. what's this Richard Blaze from Top Chef they need to get him on there and have him doing some uh, molecular molecular gastronomy and have the Swedish chef like you know you know bring in like they need to like have Richard Blaze come in do, doing molecular gastronomy and they have to have the Swedish chef bring in Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker could be a good segue if you want to talk about Muppet Labs field test next uh, it's not on my list. My, the next one on my list is Muppet Masters, yeah, which I, I barely remember. It blew it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Walter discovers the Muppets' hidden talents. Do you even remember these? Because I don't. I remember the one where he talks with uh, Uncle Deadly, and it involves into them do into a sword fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These were not memorable. I, I these were not these were not great. And I feel bad because Walter was a recent creation of the Muppets and he was designed to be kind of the everyman who gets to finally, you know, follow his dream and join the Muppets. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I love Walter. He's a great character. I love that they were able to introduce him so flawlessly into the into the uh, reoccurring characters. And for lack of better terms, he deserves better. Yeah, they didn't really give him much to do here. Um, OK, so Mupp Close and Personal. These are uh, Muppets interviewing celebrities. You have the first one, which is Kermit interviewing RuPaul, where he keeps getting interrupted by everybody, which I thought was a funny gag. And RuPaul mm-hmm. seemed to be having fun with it. Um, I, I've never seen, or I very rarely have seen RuPaul out of her drag getup, so uh, I thought that was interesting. Sorry, to this water there. <laughs> like I said, whoever put it's like, why have we never seen RuPaul with Miss Piggy? These two just have the best chemistry. Um, yeah, I thought it was a, I th- and I thought it was a fun interview. I thought RuPaul was having fun with it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I <laughs> that it's typical Kermit stuff that he can't that he just loses control over every situation. Yeah. But, um, what was the? I know the last one is Joe Rogan, not Joe Rogan, <laughs> Seth Rogan. 
and I want to get to it in just a second. What was the the one in episode four? Well, I guess it shows how uncomfortable she was. That was Aubrey Plaza. Ah, okay. Yeah, she uh, she 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 didn't seem to know what to do. You know, that that was one where I, I don't think she quite knew what to do in front of the camera, and she was trying to roll with it, but it was not not her scene. Yeah, I, I think she couldn't tell if she was supposed to be laughing or if she was supposed to be mad or what she was supposed to do. Yeah. Um, the Joe... Ro- and you can see how memorable it was for me. Um, the Joe... Ro- uh, I keep saying Joe Rogan. The Seth Rogan one is hilarious, and that's partially because he's really having fun with it. But they also paired him up with Fozzie and the babies that keep trying to kill themselves. <laughs> Well, if there's ever an actor who was on the show who clearly knows how to improvise and roll with it, it's Seth Rogen. Yeah, Seth Rogen looked like he was having a lot of fun, and you know, and his reactions to the babies are great. Yeah. Plus, what the babies are doing was pretty darn funny. At one point, one of them is just falling off the table. <laughs> it's like lift- and I laughed pretty hard at this. He was just lifting his hand and going, ah! <laughs> falling backwards. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It's like all of a sudden, the babies have swords or having a sword fight. <laughs> and, R- and Rogue is just like, I don't have children. I'm not good with kids. And yet, they bo- both the babies end up curling onto his lap. <laughs> um, you know, also, Fozzie, who's typically used for bad comedy and sight gags and whatnot, you know, as the interviewer, I thought was a fun choice. They also didn't give him much in this in, in this series. <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting that we have six episodes, and with the exception of Miss Piggy, we really don't get to spend a lot of time with the main stars of the Muppets that we know. Yeah, Gonzo's barely in it. Yeah, Kermit's barely in it. Fozzie's barely in it. You get a lot of Scooter, you know, Uh, because he's... There's no... Yeah, no Rolf. I I don't think he's in a single episode. No. There's only one appearance of the Electric Mayhem... Yeah, I don't recall much Sam the Eagle. I didn't. I don't think we got any Sam the Eagle, which sucks. I love Sam the Eagle. Um, I don't think they did anything with the with the Muppet News guy. That's no. what I can recall. So yeah, you know, but the, but the, like the trio of Kermit, Gonzo, and Fozzie, uh, yeah, they, they they're barely in this, which I thought was an odd choice. Anything else? I, about Mu- well, go, go ahead. I was like, so part of me wonders if they were trying to keep from overdoing it with their main stars. Although, again, Miss Piggy gets a segment in every single episode. So, you know, I'm just sitting there going, it's like, so were they trying to put more attention on other characters? Or do they just not know what they want to do with Fozzie and Gonzo and Kermit? Or do they think they work better in smaller doses? Which, I'm just going to be honest, Kermit actually, I think, works okay in smaller doses. Gonzo and Fozzie, no, they do not. I think Kermit, you know, I, I, I think Kermit do, works best and is best seen as the person trying to pull it all together. And he, and the thing of it was is there was nothing for him to pull together here. Unless he's directing the segments, there's nothing for him to do the way they set this up. You know, they would have had to have switched it to him being the one uploading things instead of Scooter. So Scooter basically got Kermit's role in this. You know, mm-hmm. and they, you know, they actually did the bit where, like, the one episode where he's got to get everything uploaded before the uh, the system does like a reboot or something. You know, and the gag is, oh, he needed to add fil- the, the the tech guy needed to add filters. That did make me laugh a little bit. <laughs> you made me go through all that for filters. No, yeah, my they, fa- they they gave fa- they gave Kermit's job to Scooter in this, and they didn't give anything for Kermit to do. Well, it makes sense for Scooter to be the one who would handle all of this. Scooter has always been the the tech guy, the the one who, the, you know, the stage manager. And just from looking at them, if you just looked at the puppets, you would say, yeah, that's probably the character who actually knows how to work a computer. So I was okay with that, but I agree that they should have had more for Kermit to do because the, the only thing he does, he... Um, has once he inter- he interviews RuPaul, he shows up with my personal favorite new car- character, uh, Joe the Legal Weasel. Yep, we'll talk about him next. But and yeah, he's got a cameo or two and a couple of others. Hell, I even like the this little bit in the final episode that he gave uh, the social media director position to his <laughs> nephew Robin. Yes, 
Yeah, yeah, I, yes, thank you, Eddie. I know you like that too. Um, <laughs> all right, so so my second favorite bit of the entire six episodes is Muppet Labs field test, and you know the the gag with Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker was that Bunsen Honeydew was always doing these crazy experiments that usually were abusive to Beaker. You know, and the and the gag, the, the humor is in Beaker trying is either Beaker being blown up or Beaker trying to get out of the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, they do all, they basically do the same bit from the Muppet Show in Muppets Lab Field Test. Only uh, sometimes they have celebrities involved. You know, it's a lot, and it's a lot of Bunsen Honeydew trying to blow things up um, and being very sad, which I thought was funny um, when he. They, there's the bit where they're trying to crush things, and he's and and Beaker like puts on I guess like it's like a stack of paper, yes, <laughs> and puts in honeydew. Like, what is this? Yes. <laughs> so they start like crushing obviously bigger things. You know, I kept waiting for them to crush a watermelon, um, but oh, they were my- trying to create explosions. Yeah, but then that episode, that got, I hate to say, that got so cruel when uh, Bunsen and Honeydew was like, okay, now we're going to crush some of Beaker's, you know, personal things. And then he tries to crush Beaker's teddy bear. And I'm just like, that, that's sad, because Beaker's <laughs> he's grabbing the teddy bear, and he's holding it, and Bunsen's like, oh, you love your teddy bear. I'm like, don't crush the teddy bear. I loved the last one where they were launching stuff into the wall. That was good. Was they, that order, the that was they order a bunch of pizzas and soda, yeah. and they just launch it the into pizza, the wall. Yeah, the pizza guy says, says, acts like he knows what they're doing. He's like, yeah, I deliver a lot of pizzas to Caltech. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great line. Um, so, yeah, I loved the Muppets Field Test. Uh, to, I know you wanted to talk about Joe the Legal Weasel, so go ahead. Yeah, this is easily my favorite. Joe the Legal Weasel and Beverly Plume are the two new characters created for the show, and the Legal Weasel just... Oh my god, he is so freaking funny. I love, especially since with all the pratfalls and slapsticks that the Muppets do, I love that they would have someone come in from standards and practices just to make sure that they don't get their asses sued. And he has that crazy little gag where he tells just a bland as hell joke and then he starts laughing at his own humor. And yeah, the scene when he's, um, they're doing ke- it's a Muppet Labs field test and they're doing chemistry and Joe comes in he's like no no play the fifth I don't want any part of it right he's like panicking over everything like everything you're doing here is wrong yes that was so great <laughs> and Eddie everything you're doing right now is wrong so stop barking alright and then finally we have Peppy's unbelievable game show this was a cute idea so they double use uh, Scooter here for this as well as the the framing device. You know, he's the producer of this game show, and he's got a very tight list of rules. And Peppy's like, "That's boring. I don't want to do it. I'm just going to make it up as I go along." And I have to say, the people who play the contestants, I don't know if they knew this was going to happen or if they just had to roll with it. But I, I thought they were. I don't think there was a single episode where. The game show contestants weren't funny as hell to me. Absolutely. Like, the, they, the, their reactions to half of what Pepe does is hilarious. Yes. Again, I think that a lot of it was um, briefly explained before they started the show, and it was clear that they were just like, okay, just kind of roll with it, okay? I wonder if they got, like, local improv actors. Possibly. I, I will say I'm on the Wikipedia page, and none of these actors... Um, have uh, any listings under their names here? So, if they are improv actors, I don't think they've gotten. They don't think they've done enough to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, really get their career going. Wouldn't surprise me though. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm, Pepe's not one of my favorite characters. I know they introduced him in one of the previous iterations of of the Muppet Show, but um, you know, I, I thought as a wacky game show host that's just doing ad lib. Uh, I thought he worked fine. I thought he was kind of funny. His interactions with Scooter were cracking me up. And I always, you know, just like Kermit, I love, like, the beleaguered person who's trying to keep, you know, all the cats herded. And, you know, no, and, and, and the person he's working with is just total chaos. Uh, so these, these were kind of funny. They only do it three times, episodes two, three, and five. And I think that was, the, the, I think out of six episodes, that was the right amount of times to do this. Absolutely. So, uh, which episode was your favorite? 
favorite? We know which segment was your favorite, but which episode was your favorite? Um, and probably the one with Danny Trejo. Uh, see, I figured you were going to say the one where you have uh, Waldorf and Statler be the test audience. <laughs> I here's the thing: I love them. They're my spirit animals. I, the the gag gets old. I, it, they didn't do anything with it that I thought was interesting. It was them doing the same shtick. So I mean, like, I, if they if they had been there and were doing it, you know, through the whole series, it would have been fine. I probably would have laughed. But like, I it it it's not. Tradition. It's not tremendously memorable to me. What was your favorite episode? Probably the one where uh, Scooter gets animals help to keep him awake. I have pulled more <laughs> all-nighters in my life than I care to admit. I pulled them through high school. I pulled them through college. I pull them usually before I get ready to go to a crazy huge convention because I'm a glutton for punishment. And I just love animal banging on the pipes yelling, Stay awake! <laughs> Stay awake! <laughs> just got me. It was so great. So, um... Reception. I'm just going to read this from the Wikipedia page. On the review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes, the series has an approval of 69% based on 51 reviews with an average of 6.5 out of 10. The consensus reads, though Muppets now formulaic sketches fail to showcase the Muppets' chaotic charms, it's entertaining enough to suggest that with looser reins and a lot more music, it could become the best reboot in years. Metacritic, the series, has a weighted average of 68 out of 100 based on 26 critics indicating generally be favorable reviews. The show has funny moments. You know, not all of it hits, but that's kind of this type of humor. You throw a lot at the wall, not all of it's going to hit. So I don't hold that against it. It was only six episodes, so it's like, you know, it was kind of just a taste of what you can do, you know, what the Muppets can do. I would not be surprised if it's not renewed. But I would not be unhappy if it uh, if it is renewed. I would watch this again. What do you think? I agree with the comments a lot more music. That is actually a segment that I'm really surprised they didn't go with. We get the Electric Mayhem making one appearance in the whole show, especially when the number one thing you always see people trying to get on internet shows is music videos. I, it was just like, how awesome would it have been if we had the Electric Mayhem doing music videos with guest musicians every week? That that would have been perfect I'm like why didn't they tap that however it's also clear that since there was only six episodes that this was probably a um, kind of a field test I would say mm -hmm. you get the idea that this they were that when they said they could do this they didn't say for a whole season they're like okay just give us a couple of episodes here and we'll see if we like it I do can't help but find it interesting that this went into production well before uh, the pandemic and everything shut down and the idea of doing Zoom talks and internet shows have taken off so massively due to the the, the virus and everything. I'm just like I mean, you just kind of watch it. It's like they could not have picked a better time to release this. Yeah. Yeah, I I miss I miss the Muppet Show. I miss the Muppet Show as it was, it was traditionally done. But I don't think the traditional sketch comedy show uh, works for a modern audience. And I think, you know, Disney Plus is, so, is also supposed to be geared for families, children. And, you know, this is something that I think, uh, not my, my youngest, my, I don't think my six-year-old would get it. I mean, maybe the Muppets Lab stuff, just because it's such, such physical humor. Mm -hmm. But I could see my nine-year-old... Uh, watching this and, and getting a few yucks out of it. I think she'd find the Miss Piggy stuff really funny, as a matter of fact. But, oh, totally. uh, you know, her being a fashion person and all. But I think the point that I was getting to was I don't know, you know, I, I they have to find a way to reach kids. And if my kids are any ind indicator, kids love the, the YouTube and the TikTok and, you know, anything associated with internet videos, they're all about it. And so I think kind of presenting this as an internet show, I think was a good idea. Uh, we'll see if it has any legs. You know, it's hard to say right now. And I, and, you know, I don't know. I don't have any numbers as to who, how many people watch this. And that's the, the, you know, when we talk about the money on Damn You Hollywood, that's the most frustrating thing about the streaming services is all that stuff. You're lucky if you can find articles about who watched what. I mean, sometimes you get stuff on Netflix. 
about who watched what and how popular something is. But generally speaking, they keep those numbers to themselves, unless there's something to crow about, like say, like, oh, everybody, you know, we have had so many more people sign up for Disney Plus because of Mulan, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I haven't heard shit about Muppets now, have you? Not really. Again, I really would like to see this get another season. There's a lot of potential here. They've made it clear that this format can work. And there are so many ideas that I think would make really great segments. I want to see more of, the, of uh, you know, Swedish Chef. I want to see more of Muppet Labs. I want to see more of Miss Piggy. But I want to see them get more creative with more of the Muppets. We want to see more of Gonzo and Fozzie. I want to see Ralph. I want to see the Electric Mayhem. You know, I want to see more characters uh, come back and you know, just have a lot of fun with it. So I really hope that this is a good, it's like, this is a good launching point, but that's all it is. It's a launching point. Yeah, I think a full 10 episodes and more, more, more Muppets and, and they don't need to necessarily create more segments. I don't think that's the idea, but I think adding more Muppets to more segments, you know, like what they did with Kermit and RuPaul, where like they had, you know, 10 different Muppets showing up at one point or another <laughs> to interrupt. That was fine. You know, have more Muppets involved in Miss Piggy stuff. Have more Muppets involved. You know, like, you know, today Rolf is, is here on Muppet Labs, that, that sort of thing. You know, or give, give more stuff to Walter. I, I, I think a fun segment might have been, like, maybe Walter talking to Rolf while he plays the piano. Might have been, like, you know, a really fun, and it goes to your thing about, hey, let there be more music. So, <laughs> all right, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, not the not the worst Muppet show I've ever seen. I, it was rather enjoyable. It was a really it was a really quick watch. I'll tell you that much. I got through that in a morning. Yeah, this I I, I went, at first I was just like, okay, how many episodes? Of that? That's seriously it? Are you kidding me? I thought I was going to have to binge the hell out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this right. took like three hours. Yeah, roughly. Like I said, I took, I, I got through it like in just one morning. Um, all right, so that's the end of our show. That's our review of Muppets Now. Uh, yesterday, Alexis was on the show along with Benjamin J. Cologne to talk Batman Dark Victory. Tomorrow, Jesse will be on to talk Marilyn Manson. We are chaos. Next week, um, the Kingsman moved to next year, so instead we're going to talk Punisher, the platoon. That's going to be me and Christian. Uh, myself, Robert Winfrey, and Pat Mullen are going to talk Kingdom, all the entire series. And then Jesse will be back to talk the new Finn Troll album. So that'll be fun. You can check out our reviews of Mulan, Tenet, AEW All Out, and Agretzko Season 3 in the archives on WTM. Uh, you can also ch uh, check out all of our shows on the, his blog, WTM.net. And that's where you can find all of our podcasts as well as many other podcasts on the W2M network. All right, go ahead and do your plugs there, Alexis. All right. Well, Honeysuckle Rose Creations, the intersection of geek and chic. We just wrapped up our big Labor Day sale, and we're doing a little uh, incubation, I would say, over the next uh, week or so. We're getting ready. I hate to say, put it like this because it is fall, and Halloween is my favorite seat or my favorite holiday. But there's no other way to put it. We got to get ready for the holidays, folks, because at the time of this recording, it is officially 100 days till Christmas. And if you've ever run your own business, you know how busy the holiday season gets. We are currently working on getting some more products into the shops. We are working with some local stores, trying to get our items onto the shelves out there. We're trying to get as much done as we can, especially getting ready for our big charity sale that we do every year from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Every order that is placed from either our Etsy or handmade at Amazon shops, we donate $5 to Children's Mercy Hospital. We've been doing that for the last few years. It's one of my favorite parts of the holiday season. We're going to be doing it again this year. <coughs> I'm swallowing my own spit and choking yeah. because I'm an idiot. <coughs> okay. As always, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and under duress Twitter, and our shops are always open at Etsy and handmade at Amazon. Honeysuckle Rose Creations, the intersection of geek and chic. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on TV Party Tonight. For Alexis Haina, I'm Mark Radlidge. Be well, be safe, and behave.